Hello. If you enjoyed our video on burning at the stake, and frankly who wouldn't, then you may recall that we said that we'd bring you a video on hanging, drawing and quartering, probably the best known horrific execution method. It's not the most horrific in history, now we're going to get to those later in the series, but it is certainly the most well-known traitor's death. Now, for the uninitiated amongst you, hanging, drawing and quartering involves being dragged to a place of execution, hanged, but not until dead, being disemboweled in front of a live audience, and then having the body separated, usually into four quarters and a head, hence the name. Now, mutilation of the body has been a punishment, well, since the dawn of time, but hanging, drawing and quartering as an official punishment is actually relatively modern by the standards of punishment. It was brought into law in the Treason Act of 1351 by Edward III. It had happened before that plenty of times. William Wallace suffered it on the orders of Edward's grandfather, and Hugh Dispenser, the younger, suffered it on the orders of Edward's mother. Oh, a happy family, don't you think? Now, before the Treason Act, you could technically hand this down for absolutely any crime, but Edward's Act of Parliament made this very treason-specific. When we think of treason, though, we think of trying to kill the king, like the gunpowder plotters. But there's actually quite a few crimes that fall under that banner, even before we get to the bloody code. These are planning or imagining the death of the king, his wife, or his eldest son and heir, sleeping with the king's wife, his eldest daughter if she were unmarried, or the wife of his eldest son and heir, making war against the king in his realm, giving aid and comfort to the king's enemies anywhere, counterfeiting the great seal or privy seal or the king's coinage, knowingly importing counterfeit money, or killing the chancellor, treasurer or one of the king's officers while performing their duties. That's quite an impressive list, and money counterfeiters, you better beware. So, one sentence, the condemned is dragged to the place of execution. It's debated among some people whether this is the drawing referred to in the description, but we'll come to that. In later years, this would be somebody tied to a hurdle or a board and pulled through the streets. Uh, but in earlier sentences, it could be just dragged behind a horse to the place of execution. And that journey would be through sand, grit, cobblestones, and by the time you reach the execution site, you may well be suffering several broken bones and other injuries. If we look at Francis Derham, who was one of those executed for relations with Catherine Howard, the report of his execution in Rothley's Chronicle states, Culpepper and Derham were drawn from the Tower of London to Tyburn. Take a look at the map. That's four miles over an hour. And during this time, you were pretty much at the mercy of the crowd. William Wallace was pelted with food and waste while he was dragged by his feet from the tower to Smithfield, where his monument stands today. Sometimes the condemned man would be barely alive by the time he reached the gallows. Then, after the condemned had had a chance to confess his crimes and sins before the crowd, he would be hanged. Not your typical hanging, though. He would be hanged to a point just before death. In practice, this was not that long, because executioners at the time were hardly the cream of the intelligence corps. And it was important that the victim was still alive at this stage, because now is where it starts to get graphic. So just be warned. We're going to talk some gruesome stuff here. I'm sure you're not worried because you've purposefully clicked into a video about hanging, drawing and quartering. But as I say, viewer discretion is advised. Once the body's cut down, alive, and still conscious, then the process of public dismemberment begins. And we do mean dismemberment. The member, the genitals, are the first thing removed. And they're usually burnt in front of the victim, because this is supposed to be a degrading punishment. Then the body is cut open and the inner organs, entrails, drawn out of the body and again burnt. And do note at this point, they are still attached to the body. This is described in the sentence passed to Major General Harrison, who had signed the death warrant of Charles I. The sentence was that you be led to the place from whence you came, and from thence be drawn upon a hurdle to the place of execution, and then you shall be hanged by the neck, and, being alive, shall be cut down, and your privy members to be cut off, 
and your entrails to be taken out of your body and you living the same to be burnt before your eyes. This is the other drawing that people debate about, although it's rather a pointless debate in my opinion, as in pretty much all cases of hanging, drawing and quartering, both the drawing by Hurdle to the gallows and the drawing out of the entrails while alive both occurred. Which one the title actually refers to is pretty immaterial when you think about it. Now following this, the potentially alive, yes it did happen more often than you think, Thomas Blount, executed in 1400 for plotting against Henry IV, was still capable of replying to taunts after his bowels had been cut out and burned. He said, Te Deum Laudamus, blessed be the day on which I was born, and blessed be this day, for I shall die in the service of my sovereign lord, the noble King Richard. That is Richard II. So following this, the potentially alive victim would be beheaded and then the body separated into pieces, the quartering as it were. Some accounts describe this as cutting, some accounts describe this as tearing apart by horses, and what happens to the body parts varies. Typically the head would be displayed somewhere prominent, the other body parts might be displayed around the country as a warning to others, but just as often they'd be disposed of as at the whim of the monarch. It could even be back to the family members of the deceased. At the execution of the Monmouth rebels in 1663, the body parts were then boiled, tarred and displayed on lamppost trees and poles. And this strikes me that somebody has had a good look at that punishment and thought, hanging, drawing and quartering? Too damned good for him. But you know, James II can be like that. You would think against this backdrop that the witnessing members of the public would be quite horrified and outraged. Well, not so much. If we look at this extract from famous diarist Samuel Pepys, he wrote his eyewitness account of the execution of Major General Harrison on the 13th of October 1660. I went out to Charing Cross to see Major General Harrison hanged, drawn and quartered, which was done there. He looking as cheerful as any man could do in that condition. He was presently cut down and his head and heart shown to the people, at which there was great shouts of joy. He describes the rest of his day. As putting up shelves. Now the early 19th century saw a time of great penal reform and thankfully hanging, drawing and quartering saw its last. The last man to be hanged, drawn and quartered in the UK was David Tyree in 1782. He was a Scotsman convicted of being a French spy. And while the sentence was passed on a number of people a number of times subsequently it was really only hanging followed by beheading and it wasn't done publicly either. It was nowhere near the gruesome spectacle that had been seen in earlier times. Now, with the development of more effective policing, law enforcement and the end of the bloody code, punishments began to be more associated with reform and rehabilitation rather than deterrent, and a softening descended over the UK's criminal justice system. But officially, hanging, drawing and quartering was not officially abolished until as late as 1870. That is about halfway through Queen Victoria's reign. Hanging remained the execution method of choice for treason and would stay on the statute books all the way until 1998 when the final abolition of capital punishment was passed through Parliament and that truly closed the door on a gruesome chapter of our history. But we're by no means the most gruesome and we'll come to those in future episodes. I do hope you'll join us then. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.